Are you struggling to buy groceries right now? Or the idea of just having to go get one more thing and it costs a little bit more than it was before, just completely overwhelming? I totally understand. And I want to be able to encourage you that you can have food security in your house and it doesn't have to be very hard. So if you're just finding me, my name is Amy Cross and I am the founder of The Cross Legacy. I had went viral two years ago with a strawberry hack that I can keep my berries fresh for three weeks and even had a TED talk because of it. But I know these skills because we have struggled with grocery costs forever, it has felt like. Being a busy family or having medical costs over the years, it seemed like we couldn't cut anything out of our budget and our grocery costs were out of control. Over the years, I was able to get that down, even being an allergy family with some chronic illness issues. So we spend $135 per person in our family. And right now that is just two of us at home. So on average, we're spending about $250 per month on groceries for just the two of us. When there was a lot more here at the house, we would just multiply that by how many people were at home at the time. So our family size varies. We have college age kids and we were also foster parents. So it has been a large, busy house to just the small, the two of us over the years. But we have been able to, even during this time of inflation, keep our grocery budget in check. So I just want to kind of talk about some of these items that I'm pulling out of the freezer and we're going to be using for meal prep this week. Our grandma is, um, She's almost 95 and she is in the hospital. And so I wanted to make meals as easy as possible because we are just running in and running out and just trying to spend as much time as we can with grandma. So um, some of those things that I'm doing this week is being able to pull out things of the freezer that I already had prepared. So when I make a batch of something like salsa chicken, I'll make enough for like three or four meals and then I will divide it up into our dinner size containers. So when the family was bigger, <laughs> the containers were bigger, but now this is the size that Mike and I need for the two of us. So instead of those leftovers going bad in the refrigerator, cause I overcooked, I put them away in the freezer and then it's easy to pull these out for another dinner. So the salsa chicken is really easy to throw on tortillas and just add a little bit of cheese. And there's already tons of vegetables and beans in it. So I really don't care what the side is that we eat with it. So I am diabetic. So I tried to reduce some of my carbs. So sometimes we will have rice and if it's a high blood sugar day, then we won't. <laughs> so it kind of, my meal plan kind of has to fluctuate on how I'm feeling. And for me, my blood sugar numbers, but um, salsa chicken is something great that I have in the freezer. Often it's actually a crock pot um, recipe to begin with. So it's just super easy from beginning to end. Another thing that I had made me recently, because we had humongous zucchinis coming in from the garden is zucchini filling for zucchini boats. So this is the meat filling with all the vegetables that are in this. The recipe for this is in our grocery solution course Facebook group too, if you're looking for that. So I was able to freeze this and pull it out. And then I have some smaller zucchinis here that will end up just throwing in the oven and cooking and adding with the zucchini boat um, filling that we have. So again, like three or four minutes worth of effort and we will have dinner done. And what else do we have here? I have Sloppy Joe um, filling here. So this is cooked Sloppy Joe's. It has a ton of vegetables in this too that are hidden in there. And then I have buns in the freezer so we can have this easily on another night for dinner. And by keeping them in the freezer bags like this in the freezer and smushing them down flat, they will defrost really quickly too. So, which is a great thing. <laughs> it looks like Wilson. Um, I put my hand right on it. <laughs> so for Gustaway. <laughs> Yesterday I was um, scrolling Instagram cause you know, that's what I do. And my friend was talking about her beef stew that she was making. And she was actually saying that she wasn't feeling good and she had got DoorDash to deliver the items to our house for this beef stew. And she ended up spending $55 on the ingredients to have DoorDash come to her house. And what she was saying was a savings. And I was like, 
yeah, that's great. You know, you'll have dinner one night and then have enough for another lunch or another meal another day. And she said she actually had spent $60 on DoorDash the day before for three sandwiches that was only one meal. So just by being able to plan ahead a little bit, I already had beef stew meat in my freezer and beef stew had sounded good. So I was able to pull that out and we will be able to have beef stew this week. But I already have celery and carrots ready to go. And these are over two weeks old and we're fresh in my refrigerator. So just by planning ahead a little bit, these carrots and celery that I was planning on using with a dip, they easily can go into a beef stew and make two more full dinners um, or lunches, whatever we're going to do with this. But I thought it was really interesting that she has the budget to be able to do DoorDash. We don't do DoorDash hardly ever, but just making those different choices. I was able to see her recipe idea and then remember, you know, it's September, it's fall. <laughs> like I want to start making soups again um, for the season and it sounded really good and I had all the ingredients. So again, teaching you how to keep ingredients in your house is something that I do in the grocery solution. So that course link is linked below and it truly is invaluable. Like if you're going to be calling DoorDash at all once a month, like you're going to be able to have food security in your house and not need to do that anymore. So that is some of the kind of dinner things that we'll repurpose for lunch here. But some of the other things that I do, a lot of people don't know that I actually work besides work and take care of grandma and do all the things like it. I'm just not here all the time. So I make the idea of having egg bites or a quiche in these super cubes and then I can freeze them just straight into the freezer from this container that had been in the oven. So these are just a couple of the ones that I have. I'm always making them with different um, ingredients in them mostly because Mike doesn't like mushrooms and I do so I can like put more mushrooms and spinach in mine <laughs> and then I make ones with it for him that are more like ham and cheddar cheese and things that he eats <laughs> but mine have more veggies in them but these are just perfect to be able to take with me and then warm up wherever I'm wherever I'm at or instead of just drinking coffee all morning, cause I'm pretty good at doing that too. I do put protein in it, but <laughs> if I have breakfast all prepared, I make sure that I actually have ate like a mommy adult breakfast instead of just running around and worrying about everybody else. So these egg bites are a lifesaver. Again, those are going to be in the grocery solution for the recipe. And then something else that we do all the time, especially on the weekends, is we make protein waffles. So I make extra ones. And that is a big lie. I never make the waffles, ever, ever. Mike makes the waffles. <laughs> so, waffles and bacon. I don't ever make. He always makes them. <laughs> I'm always trying to be truthful here, but we try to make extra waffles and then I'll eat those um, during the week too. And you can always freeze these and then just put them in the toaster. So you can make protein waffles. You can add extra eggs to it and different things to make them um, have more protein in them. We do have one vegetarian in our family, but she will eat eggs. And so I'm able to sneak some extra protein into her diet sometimes by making the waffles. And with it being the change of the season, and it being fall now instead of summertime. I'm kind of moving away from wanting strawberries and different things on my waffles. And now it's time for having like apple butter or applesauce on my waffles, which is like one of my favorite things. And then another thing for fall is to have like fresh cut pears or apples with my waffles. So you can have like the same basic thing every single weekend forever, but change it through the seasons. And it's it brings new variety to your family's diet. And then, what else do I have here? I haven't been to the grocery store in over two weeks. I think it's been 15 or 16 days at this point. And I just wanted to show you some of the fresh produce that I still have. So, well, there's more in the fridge too, but here's a couple things. <laughs> so, this is spinach. I washed it when I brought it home. So it kills off the listeria, mold spores, E. coli, anything else that is harmful. Spinach especially is the most recalled produce item. So even if it was in that plastic container with the, you know, lid and says that it was commercially washed, it still gets recalled all of the time. So every time you think about that and you hear it on the news, 
think if you just took the time to wash and dry it when you brought it home, you can keep it fresh longer and it's safe for your family to eat. So normally when I put it in the refrigerator, I put it in these Resob glass containers. We have an Amazon link for that in the description, but it will stay fresh. This is over two weeks old at this point. And then if we don't eat this all before I need to go to the grocery store again, which again, I only go to the grocery store once every three-ish to four weeks, then I will take whatever spinach is left and I'll put it in a stasher silicone bag and I'll put that in the freezer. And then I can use it straight from the freezer into any recipes or smoothies is how we normally eat um, lettuce, or not lettuce, how we normally eat spinach. Something else that I can keep fresh for weeks is lettuce. So this is a head of romaine lettuce. Again, it fits in that same Resolve container that we'll have linked in the description. I had already broken one of these yesterday in a video on Instagram, but <laughs> this is the fresh looking lettuce. Um, and it's over two weeks old at this point, and I'm going to snap this. You can see like the little moisture that will come off of this. It was completely dry when we put it away, and we'll make sure to link the blog post to teach you exactly how to do that in the description or the show notes when you go to look at this video. The last thing that I wanna show here is the carrots and the celery. So again, we have these cut into sticks. I had a little bit of dip that I had made. Um, this was with the gyros that I had made the other day and we had extra sauce, but it's perfect for dipping for vegetables too so that it doesn't go to waste. But this is celery. It's totally crispy and these are carrots. I can't even do it, there you go. <laughs> so these are carrots and um, these have been in this container again over two and a half weeks and they're perfect to just hand out for snacks. You can see exactly what's in it and you know, it's just a little bit of prep time on the day that you go shopping and you can have fresh produce the whole entire time. But I just really wanna encourage you when you go to make dinner, instead of just tucking things away into the refrigerator and they get forgotten about, to make sure that you can put things away in the freezer and have a whole nother meal for another day. So I have reflective sympathetic dystrophy, um, which affects my joints and pain levels. And when this weather is switching from um, summertime to fall, and right now it's still like nice days, but when it starts getting those cold, wet days, I really struggle with my energy levels and my pain levels and be able to take some time on those better days to be able to just make a little bit more and get it put away in the freezer saves so much time and even if you don't have a garage freezer like we do and you're just using a kitchen freezer if you're planning ahead and prepping things and putting them in bags and flagging them out you'll be surprised how much food you can get into a kitchen refrigerator so these are just some of our tips, I really encourage you to join our grocery solution course. It has a, a Facebook group that's attached to that. I am trying to post in there a couple times a day with new recipe ideas and things that are happening and to answer your questions all of the time. So really to save the most amount of money on your groceries, that is the best place to follow. But we have over 350 videos here on YouTube also. So um, make sure that you're checking it out here. And don't forget, we have a book series called I Bought It Now What, which is on thecrosslegacy.com that goes through 75 produce items and how to keep them fresh for weeks. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please comment below and share this with a friend who might be struggling with groceries right now too.